YouTuber turned cruiserweight boxer Jake Paul's got his ninth win over the weekend and he boldly proclaimed that he is the face of boxing. Of course, this is absolute utter bollocks, but how good is Jake Paul? Let's take a look. The Problem Child's first three bouts were all against YouTubers. In other words, they were novices with no boxing experience, so nothing could be gauged from this. But fair play to Paul, he got rid of all three of them. He then stepped up in class when he squared off against Ben Askren. Askren was a world-class amateur wrestler and a world-class mixed martial artist and a god-awful boxer. Still, it was thought his fighting experience would give him an advantage. It didn't at all. Paul absolutely annihilated the much smaller man in one round. Paul continued to fight smaller mixed martial artists and as he squared off against former welterweight boss Tyrone Woodley and won a split decision in eight rounds. He showed some fighting heart in this one and he picked up a good win. In the rematch, he dramatically leveled Woodley in six rounds, proving without question that he was a serious puncher. Faded former UFC great and middleweight champion Anderson the Spider Silver was next. Paul won this one on points over eight rounds. In his prime, Anderson was a very inventive, very devastating striker. However, he was again much smaller and very long in the tooth. Still, for a young boxer, this was a good win. A victory that looked even better when Silver went on to outscore former WBC middleweight boss Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Then came Paul's fight with unbeaten Brit Tommy Fury. Fury is from a fighting family and he's been boxing his entire life. However, he's more pretty boy than fighter and he's done nothing in the pro ranks to suggest he's going anywhere. On fight night, Paul scored a knockdown but was exposed as being a bit flat-footed as Fury used his superior mobility and wear crate to outscore Paul over eight rounds. Still, it was a learning fight and it was close. Back to mixed martial artists next as he squared off against former welterweight contender Nate Diaz. Diaz is super tough, but a limited boxer. And again, he was much smaller. Paul controlled the bout and won soundly on points over 10 rounds. Again, he had to show some toughness, however, in getting the win. Since then, Paul has feasted on some journeyman pros. Andre August was blown away in one, as was Ryan Berland. All these fights did was pad out Paul's record and his bank account. Neither man was a suitable opponent for Paul and he won of Len a bloody thing. So the question is, where does he stand at the moment? Currently, BoxRec have him ranked as the 113th cruiserweight boxer in the world. And to be honest, that seems about right. Just a place behind Tommy Fury, who is himself a place behind Tommy McCarthy, a former European boss whose career is now on the skids. Now, Paul's been calling out Saul Canelo Alvarez, which would be a big money fight, but also not a realistic one. If Paul was serious about this boxing business, how far do I reckon he could get? The top 10 is way above his capabilities. The best cruiserweight in the world right now, Jay Opatai, would absolutely destroy him, as would pretty much anyone in the top 10. Probably the weakest champion we have right now is Chris Billum Smith, but he would be way too seasoned, way too big, way too strong and hit way too hard. Paul would take a kick in. Could he beat British boss Isaac Chamberlain? I very much doubt it. I think Chamberlain would put a beating on him. After all, Isaac took the power punches of Chris Billum Smith, so I can see him just walking through what Paul has to offer. Now, how would Paul fare against somebody like Jordan Thompson? A former world title challenger with a big punch, but also a little bit open. He can be hit. This is probably the type of fight that Paul could possibly win he'd still be a big underdog but he'd have the puncher's chance i still think thompson would knock him unconscious but at least it's the first fight we've mentioned where he has a slight chance so if paul maximizes his potential keeps improving on the job i reckon he can probably crack the top 30 to 40 cruiserweights in the world however that's a big if and he certainly won't get there fighting these bums current ranking for jake paul out of 10 10 being Terence Crawford, 1 being Ryan Berland. I'm going to give the problem child a 5 with the potential to be maybe a 6. What do you reckon, fight fans? Am I overrating this kid? Please like and subscribe.